everyone. Uh, my name is Miranda Mulholland, and uh, thanks to Max and the Arkells for that virtual introduction and message of unity. Uh, if any of our international guests are unfamiliar with their work, Arkell's music has become an anthem for resistance for Ontario citizens standing up for the disadvantaged, as well as the importance of education in the province. At this year's Juno Awards, upon winning Rock Group of the Year, Arkells offered the time allotted for their acceptance speech to the incredible Jeremy Dutcher, who had won the Indigenous Music Album of the Year Award, so he could conclude his moving speech about reconciliation in Canada. I'm pleased to be hosting this event about the political power of music, and it's a subject that's very close to my heart. I'm a musician, a record label owner, and the founder of the Sada City Music Festival in Gravenhurst, Ontario, and I'm also proud to be serving as chair of Music Canada's Advisory Council. Over the last three years, I've had the privilege and opportunity to speak truth to power on the state of the music industry from a creator's perspective at some of the world's most important intellectual property forums, including the World Intellectual Property Organization in Geneva, uh, during trade negotiations in Washington, which would become the USMCA, and directly to Canadian members of parliament during our much needed Copyright Act review. Now the reason that I've been so compelled to speak out is that I fear professional creativity is at risk. Music has become devalued by enormous tech platforms that profit massively from our work, giving music away in many cases for free while returning little to the people who create it. Confronted by this new reality that I feel is unethical and unjust, I'm doing what musicians and artists for decades have done. I'm raising my voice and telling my story and joining other creators at the forefront of this fight to shape a better future for music and a better future for the change makers of tomorrow. And I'm urging others, especially my fellow artists, to stand up and take action. Now we live in a democracy and we, the people, get to decide how we want to shape our society. The unification of voices for change and policy reform, most recently in Europe, the USA and here in Canada, gives me hope. The lessons from history about the rebalancing of ledgers and regulating of policy after upheaval give me hope. We've turned a corner and the momentum is growing and we're undergoing an awakening. I think there's a global realization, finally, that free isn't actually free. And I think there's a global movement to preserve arts and culture and the very thing that we will leave behind in civilization to say that we were here. Our global language of music unites us. So creators of music and literature and visual arts have always been at the forefront of every revolution in which people fought to make our lives better. And music has provided the soundtrack for human rights movements around the world. Musicians were there advocating through music for civil rights, for democracy, for peace, for the right to vote, for birth control, and for the environment. And I'm so happy that Lorraine Sagato of the Parachute Club is here to speak today. Uh, Parachute Club song, Rise Up, was written as a universal anthem of freedom and equality and has since been adopted as an, as an activist anthem for causes as diverse as the right to love whoever you want, feminism and anti-racism. The music that you heard while coming in today is a playlist of songs by artist advocates who I admire, protest songs, songs of change, and songs envisioning a better future for all of us. When speaking to governments and policymakers, I tell them that we musicians have been there for you and now we need your help to rebalance the ledgers. But it's not just governments. Everyone, everyone here has a part to play in rebalancing the ledger for the creators. For musicians, it means being honest about the situations you're in, despite the pressure of social media and the perception of success. It means supporting strong copyright law and empowering artists' colleagues to speak out and do the same. And in that token, it also means offering your platform to make space for those who need to be heard. As music lovers, make informed decisions about how to stream music responsibly in a way that benefits the musicians but also protects your valuable data. Again, free doesn't mean actually free. Subscribe to a music service. Don't use YouTube. Buy vinyl and go to concerts. I think I'm preaching to the choir here, but uh, 
I might as well make note of those things. Uh, to those who continue to work in the music industry, I say use the returning revenue as you're doing to reinvest in young creators and diverse voices and continue to use your powerful amplification to encourage growth in all corners of the ecosystem. And for policymakers, it is very clear. End broad safe harbors. Stop subsidizing billionaires who are commercializing the work of others without fair compensation. Yeah. For humans, music is an integral part of our history, our identity, and our legacy, and we need to protect it and celebrate it however we can. Our keynote speaker today is the author of a fantastic book examining the political power of music throughout recorded history. Looking at examples from Beyonce to Beethoven to the UK grime scene, Sound System, The Political Power of Music is the story of Dave Randall's journey to understand what makes music so powerful and how can we make music work for the many rather than the few. Dave is a musician and also an activist. He's toured the world playing guitar with Faithless, Dido, Sinead O'Connor, and many others. He releases his own music under Slovo and Randall and is also a screen composer. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Dave Randall.